the signing of the ketubah. This is, in the Jewish religion, this is the traditional uh, wedding document. Um, this says that the, the two, Eric and Erica, will really sign a covenant with each other. It's really like a contract that says that they will be now married and responsible to each other. Now, I agree. <laughs> now in ancient times, Oh, first of all, I'm Cantor Steve Schur, and this is uh, Father John O'Sullivan. We are, our, we are the co-officiants today of the ceremony. Yeah, it's not cute. A rabbi in the making. Okay. If you're not Jewish, that won't stop you. Now, in ancient times, what this document meant was that the groom would take possession of the bride. He's smart. <laughs> She's not. And, and in, um, in order to be possessed by the groom, the groom would have to um, promise various uh, forms of security. Uh, he would have to give her a roof over her head. He would have to... Um, make sure that he was secure enough financially to take care of her. And we've been able to translate from the ancient Aramaic. He would have to make sure she has credit card. <laughs> Think about it for a while. You'll get it. You'll get it. But in today's uh, modern ketubah, it's really an egalitarian. Covenant. It says that these two will respect each other, each other's backgrounds and faiths, that they will go into their marriage as equal partners. So I'm going to read a little bit, not in the Hebrew, but in the English translation, uh, of what this document says. Then after that, first the bride will sign... And then the groom will sign. You'll use your uh, maiden name to sign, and you'll use your maiden name as well. <laughs> then two witnesses. Do you have the two witnesses? Yeah, my sister and his best man. All right. Man. Where are the two witnesses? Raise your hands. They're right here. Ah, well, excellent. Thank you. And then I will ask Father O'Sullivan to sign, and then I will sign. You can use your maiden name as well. <laughs> okay, I'll use mine too. On the sixth day of the week, the 14th day of the month of Nisan, in the year 5779, which corresponds to the 19th day of the month of April, in the year 2019 in Belleville, New Jersey, the groom, Eric Scott Landisberg, son of Sheila, Nancy, and Jeffrey Landisberg, and the bride, Erica Patente, is that pronounced correctly? Yes. Daughter of Delet De 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 and Michael Anthony Patente entered into the covenant of marriage before God and these witnesses and said each to the other, I betroth you to me forever. I betroth you to me in everlasting faithfulness. I will be your loving friend as you are mine. Set me as a seal upon your heart, like the seal upon your hand, and I will cherish you, honor you, uphold and sustain you in all truth and sincerity. I will respect you and the divine image within you. I take you to be mine in love and tenderness. May we be consecrated one to the other by these rings. Let our hearts be united in faith and hope. May our hearts beat as one in times of gladness as in times of sadness. You can't object until later. <laughs> Let our home be built on understanding and loving kindness. May our home be rich with wisdom and reverence. All this we take upon ourselves to be valid and binding. And we say together, Amen. 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 Okay. Now, okay. <laughs> Mm. 
and our groom. Do you real signature? What? A real one. Great. Our first witness, who would Good. like to be our first witness? Thank you. Ladies first, ladies first. Right here. <laughs> And our second witness. Okay. And Father O'Sullivan, if you would sign right here. We're almost done, folks. Okay, and I will sign. Whoop. There is a movie. <laughs> <laughs> And now I will chant a blessing that is common to all of our faiths. Blessed, O Lord our God, creator of the universe, who sustains life and enables all of us together to reach this occasion. Baruch Adonai. Eloheinu melech haolam, shehech bianu, vekiyamanu, vehigianu, lazman hazeh. And we can all say, Amen. That is the conclusion of this ceremony, and I suggest you put someone in charge of the ketubah so it doesn't get lost somewhere. Okay. Okay? okay? Yes. I'm going to put it right back in the envelope. Uh, uh, Do you want to take a picture of it?
Who brings this beautiful bride forward today? Her mother and I do. Amen. Watch your dress. Watch my dress, Dad. Mm -hmm. You think you can come here? Hold each other's hands. Okay. Oh, please be seated. I know. But your family and friends, welcome. We're gathered here today to witness this beautiful love, this joining together of Erica and Eric in holy matrimony, which is commended and one of the most honorable titles which may exist between a man and a woman, and that title is husband and wife. I want to recognize <laughs> my co-officiant. I'll let him introduce Just himself. Let it go, Mike. I'm Cantor Steve Scherr, and it's my delight and honor to share this sacred space with Father John O'Sullivan. Family and friends. You're invited here today because you have shared and contributed to Erica and Eric's lives in the past. And by witnessing their marriage ceremony today, Erica and Eric ask that you share in their future. Marriage is a promise made in the hearts of two people who love each other, which takes a lifetime to fulfill. Marriage encompasses all of life's most important relationships. Wife and husband are each other's lover, teacher, listener, critic, life companion, and best friend. It's a very great pleasure, as I said before, to share this space with uh, Father O'Sullivan, but also to share this space with you, Eric and Erica. You know, today we not only celebrate your marriage, but we also celebrate the diversity of your faiths, your life experiences, and your perspectives, because they have contributed to who each of you is, and that contribution, whether directly or indirectly, has made a difference in making you attracted to each other. So we should celebrate those things. Diversity is the spice of life. As well, having met you on FaceTime, <laughs> I can tell that the two of you are very well suited for each other. You complement each other. More than what you said is what I observed about the two of you. Uh, you complemented each other in the sense that um, you showed regard for each other and what each of you had to say. I think you complement each other in personality. That is um, Erica. Eric did not interfere with your planning of the wedding or ceremony. And that's very important that you complement each other. But more importantly, what I observed is that you have respect for each other. You cannot have love without respect. We are covered over by this canopy, in a sense, this chupa, which in our tradition says that it is there to cover over you and to protect you and it has no closings on any side so that as a community that you've created you invite everyone else in to share your community they have a beautiful reading and i invite Denise, forward for our reading. Oh, it's raining. It's starting to rain. That's okay. It's love. Okay. 
Oops. Lord, help us to remember when we first met and the strong love that grew between us. To work that love into practical things so that nothing can divide us. We ask for words both kind and loving and hearts always ready to ask forgiveness as well as to forgive. Dear Lord, we put our marriage in your hands. Amen. Amen. At every joyous occasion, we bless wine. Wine is a symbol of God's creative abilities, and therefore we acknowledge God's creative abilities at every joyous ceremony. And you can't see this, folks, but this is white wine, not the typical sacramental red shared by both our faiths. The reason it is white is very important so that if the nervous bride spills on her gown, the nervous groom will still have a nice evening. But more importantly, the blessing, the traditional blessing says, Blessed are you, O God, creator of the fruit of the vine. And uh, in a sense, uh, it really applies to the two of you, for the two of you are creating your union, and you are the fruit of the vine. I'm going to chant the blessing, which I just translated, and I'm going to ask first our bride to drink, not yet, not yet, and then our groom, and you'll need this at this point, I'm sure. Baruch Adonai. Eloheinu melech ha'olam, orei hari ha'gafen. And we can all say amen. Amen. Very good. Don't spill. Thank you so much. Right Beautiful ceremony is the robe ceremony, this wedding celebration is the joining together of two unique and wonderful families who stood separate until this very day. Today we unite these families by the marriage of Erica and Eric. Now, Erica and Eric would like to honor their separateness, but they want to honor their families and their togetherness right now with the giving of a rose to their mothers. So I'll go over there. Go over here, hopefully. Okay. Where are you going? She told me to follow her. In the old language of flowers, a single red rose, or a single rose meant, I love you. Love you. Love you. And Eric and Eric would also like to acknowledge the love and sacrifice, the never-ending support that each mother has made in their lives and made them the man and the woman that they are today, committed, loving, in their own right. Amen. <laughs> now, a couple of good questions, and I think they're important questions. Erica and Eric look into each other's eyes. Have you come here freely and without reservation to give yourselves to each other in marriage? I have. Yes. Will you love and honor each other as husband and wife for the rest of your lives? Yes. Since it is your intention to enter into marriage, you may now declare your vows to one another. You want to go first? I guess I will. Look into his eyes. I'll hold the book. All right. I, Erica, take you, Eric to be my husband. I promise to comfort you, to encourage you in all walks of life. I promise to express my thoughts and my emotions to you and to listen to you in times of joy and in times of sorrow. Eric, do you promise to let me share my life and all that I am with you from this day forward? I do. <laughs> I, Eric, take you, Erica, to be my wife. 
I promise to comfort you, to encourage you in all walks of life. I promise to express my thoughts and emotions to you and to listen to you in times of joy and in times of sorrow. Erica, you promised to let me share my life and all that I am with you from this day forward? I do. You have declared your consent before this community. Okay. Yeah, you can always show me the ring. Yeah, it's good. Yes, I'm I'm May I have the rings? Oh, I just, so this is your big moment. Yeah. <laughs> okay, I'm going to take them over here. Thank you. Now that you have exchanged your vows, you will now formally unite as husband and wife with the exchange of rings. Okay. Erica, you're going to hold Eric's ring, and Eric, you will hold Erica's ring. Now, I'm going to ask you first in Hebrew to exchange the words, and then in English, you will be translating those words. Eric, we will start with you. Look into the eyes of your beloved and repeat after me. Hare at. Hare at. Mekudeshet li. Mekudeshet li. Bitabat. Bitabat. Zo. Zo. Zot do di. Zot do di. Zot re i. Zot re i. Be consecrated to me. Be consecrated to me. As my wife. As my wife. With this ring. With this ring. You are my beloved. You are my beloved. You are my friend. You are my friend. Good. 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 Yeah. Erica, look into the eyes of your beloved and repeat after me. Hare. Hare. Ata. Ata. Mekudesh. Mekudesh. Li. Li. Betabat. Betabat. Zo. Zo. Ze do di. Ze do di. Good. Ze re i. Ze re i. Be consecrated to me. Be consecrated to me. As my husband. As my husband. With this ring. With this ring. You are my beloved. You are my beloved. You are my friend. You are my friend. Turn this around. It's on there tight. Mm -hmm. Okay. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Okay. Now there are traditional wedding blessings that are usually chanted at the wedding ceremony. Uh, they're from what is called the Sheva Brachot, or the Seven Wedding Blessings. They only take 20 or 30 minutes, so you can take out your phones and watch a movie. I'm going to abridge them, so they're only the first uh, blessings that apply to bride and groom. Blessed are you, O God, who brings forth from the earth, the wine of marriage. Blessed are you, O Lord, creator of the universe, who blesses the bride and groom. And we can all say together, Amen. Amen. As we celebrate this wedding today, we remember all those who could not physically be with us here today, but that are spiritually present. The love that they gave Lizon and the love that is celebrated and shared in this wedding today. 
Eric and Eric would like to keep in mind, most importantly, their grandparents. And we say, Amen. <laughs> and now that you have spoken the words, look into each other's eyes and perform the rites which unite your lives, we hereby, in conform to the laws of this sovereign state of New Jersey, declare your marriage to be valid and binding as we pronounce you to be husband and wife before all here assembled. <laughs> and now, as we approach the conclusion of our ceremony, both Father O'Sullivan and I join together in invoking a blessing upon the two of you that we share from the book of Deuteronomy. I will chant, he will translate. <laughs> I'm glad you're excited about this. Yivarecha Adonai ve'yishmarecha May God bless you and keep you Ya'er Adonai panavelecha May God's blessing shine upon you. May God grant you and your beloved ones long life, good health, and peace. Now we will conclude the ceremony with the breaking of the glass. There are many traditions, or rather there are many explanations for this tradition, but I like the contemporaneous one that says, the glass is like your union, your relationship. It is fragile and pristine, and it can easily be shattered. So it's a mandate upon you to have the care and love and consideration for each other so that the glass of your union does not break. But we live in a real world and every union, every marriage has its challenges. After all, you're both individuals. Sometimes there's even a shard or two. So it's a further mandate that you have the powers of healing for each other so that the glass of your marriage does not have to break. So, Eric, I'm going to ask you to Let's put it that out. down. Do you think it'll break if you don't take it out? Yeah. Oh, I didn't realize. Yeah. Oh, We're going to take it out of the plastic. <laughs> we want to make sure it breaks. Yeah. <laughs> Just think, 100 years ago, they could not take this out of the plastic. All right. Yeah, I think that's like the top. Exactly. Of the it so step more on the top. Right? Yep. Hold that. So make sure you know it's stiff. All right. So now you're going to smash down on that. Not yet. And after you smash down on it, suddenly we will hear music playing. And everyone will yell, Mazel Tov, congratulations, and whatever other presently, uh, uh, pleasantries you are inspired to call out. Are you ready? I'm ready. Go ahead. <laughs> Mazel Thank you. <laughs> 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 
ladies and gentlemen, can we have a more nice big round of applause for the new Mr. and Mrs. Landisberg having a first dance together as husband and wife on this very special day. But right now, if everybody can kindly find a way to their seats, please. Ladies and gentlemen, if I can have your attention, please. Once again, your attention, please. I'd like to pull your attention to the center of the dance floor. We have our bride still standing here. Hey, Mom, sit so where, where is Dad? If I can have everybody's attention, please. In front of you, you should have a glass of champagne. Let's find that with our right hands. 
We have several people who'd like to say a few kind words. The first person I'd like to call upon is the proud father of our bride. Michael, come on up and stand behind our bride and groom. It is a Kodak moment, so we need you to come on up and come back here. And ladies and gentlemen, once again, please, your full attention for the father of our bride. Thank you. Hi and welcome. I'm Mike Patenti, the beautiful bride's father. My wife and I, along with the Landisbergs, Jeffrey and Sheila, would like to thank you all for coming to share in Erica and Eric's wedding. Everyone knows our family. Uh, everyone who knows our family, I'll probably read some of this. I'll, I'll ad lib a little. <laughs> Everyone who knows our family knows how much we love our girls and the special relationships that we have with them. Some of the speeches tonight are going to overlap a little bit, and I don't want to take anybody's thunder, but I'm just warning you about that. That wasn't in the speech. <laughs> so our firstborn child was our beautiful daughter, Nicole. So being young parents, there's my baby over there. We naively thought that our second baby was going to be a boy. But to our surprise, a girl, Erica, came out quite abruptly right after lunch <laughs> on March, May 24th, 1981. May 24th, yes, I am. <laughs> As the doctor prepped for delivery with his back turned, he said to my wife, hold on. Being in delivery for 12 plus hours with our first baby, Nicole, my wife nodded okay. But then all of a sudden, things changed. And she quickly said, I can't. And as the doctor turned around, Erica, all five pounds, 13 ounces of her, popped right out into the doctor's arms. <laughs> and I couldn't have loved her more, whether she was a boy or a girl. She was just perfect. As it turned out, Erica was my little pal and wanted to be sort of like her dad. One of my special times shared with Erica would be in the morning. She had her own little toy shaving kit. And, and I would stand her up on the sink and she would shave along with me in the mirror. She was so adorable. She was the cutest little girl with little blonde pigtails and a big, beautiful smile. She loved Alf, Fievel, and Hulk Hogan. She even had some real cool Hulk Hogan sneakers. For the younger people, you probably don't even know these people. After Hulk Hogan, she turned to new kids on the block, as most young girls did. Just like her older sister, she also later turned to ballet, and dance, and then to cheerlead. Throughout school, she carried on the Patenti girl tradition and was very popular and, of course, a social butterfly. <laughs> Believe it or not, Erica also played basketball, and she was a heck of a point guard. We can clearly remember how tenacious she was on defense and so thrilled when she found out that she had five fouls to during the game, and she made sure she used all of them. <laughs> My wife and I coached our girls in softball, and Tom was out in the audience someplace, he did too, and Erica was an awesome catcher. The umpires at first used to say, what is this protection I'm getting from this little short girl? But they soon found out that she was enough. Enough, yes, that's my girl. <laughs> In high school, in addition to cheer, she was also a member of the first girls lacrosse team at Bridgewater Rarick High School. Again, she played hard, and although she was a tiny one, that never stopped her because she was always tough. She gave 100% then, as she does now in whatever she's doing. 
We were especially proud of Erica when she got accepted into and graduated from the College of New Jersey. And then so delighted, she decided to make her career as a teacher. She certainly surpassed my uh, expectation after college when I merely told her, as I did her sister, they needed to get a job with benefits. <laughs> as parents, you never know how your children will turn out, but my wife and our, our, I are beyond proud and blessed to have raised two wonderful and successful daughters. It doesn't hurt also that they're beautiful too. I can't help it, we just love our girls. Um, now on to Mr. Eric Landisberg. <laughs> When I first met him, I have to admit, I was a little bit apprehensive. <laughs> Must be my luck, but he is both a Giants fan in football and a Mets fan in baseball. For anyone that knows me and Erica, we are both avid Bears and Yankees fans. So who knows, maybe she can work her magic and get at least one team change. <laughs> also, with Eric, we quickly noticed that our grandchildren, Alexia and Enzo, just instantly seemed to love him, just like his nephews, Cameron and AJ, do. So, as they say, children have a way of sensing good people. We enjoy seeing Eric's playful side of them, which is good because family is extremely important to Erica and us. Uh, we've also witnessed how sensitive and supportive, supportive that Eric has been with the elderly, too. From the beginning, Eric has been very caring and kind to Erica's grandmother by making Thursday dinner night spent with his two girls. At times, Erica has been known to kiddingly say to her grandmother, Hey, knock it off. He's my man. <laughs> Grandma just loves him. Eric, uh, we are proud to welcome you into our family. It's very hard to give away my baby girl. But we trust that you will strive to love her as much as we do. One thing for sure is that we can see that you, Eric, make our Erica happy. And that is all we want for our baby girl as well as a job with benefits. <laughs> so, on this, their wedding day, as Erica and Eric begin their life together, let us all raise our glasses and wish them all the happiness that comes with having someone to trust, care for, and share the important things together. Let love hold you close so that nothing in the world can come between you and may God bless you. Salute. Exactly what I was going to say because 
part of me wanted to make Erica ugly cry that she did to me at my wedding. So ugly. But then I realized that I'd probably be the one ugly crying at Ken, and now I have a microphone, so it'd be even worse. So I decided not to. Um, I don't think it surprises anybody to know that I love my sister. <laughs> and she's worthy of all the love in the world, so I am beyond thrilled that she found that in you, Eric. <laughs> um, throughout the years, Eric and I have had laughs, lots of them. A few fights, right? Just a few. <laughs> <laughs> but we've always maintained our shared belief that a family is life's greatest blessing. I think you said that too, Dad. Thanks. <laughs> We're extremely lucky to have been raised by some amazing parents. If you don't know them, they are really great people. You should get to know them tonight. Um, and some, most of you, if you have Facebook, you can tell by my mother's post that we are a very close knit family, which posts everything. <laughs> um, but I, along with them, have had the honor of watching them grow up into such an amazingly strong woman, a fantastic teacher that I'm actually in awe when I hear her. She goes into her teacher stuff. I'm like, whoa, <laughs> look at her go. Um, but that is until she uses that teacher voice on me, and then I'm about to knock her out. <laughs> Can't stand it. Well, Nicole, did it? Oh, no, no. <laughs> I'm sure you teachers know that. You probably get yelled at by your family, too. <clears throat> anyway. You've always been an independent thinker, and there was a bit of time growing up when perhaps we didn't have the same interests, like when you had a men shaving kit. That was not having a shaving thing. It was like only two years ago. No, I'm only kidding. I'm only kidding. She was young. She was really young. I, I joke. I joke. But it was like the one with like the little thing, the brush things that she'd like brush on. But anyway. Um, and um, when you thought you were Hulk Hogan, because these things really did happen. And she had the clothes and the sneakers and everything. It was interesting. But you know, Eric, she doesn't really have to shave her face, and she's out of that, so you're good. <laughs> but the Hulk, the Hulk remains inside of her. See, you all see this little cute thing, and you're like, oh, she's so sweet, and oh, Erica. But oh my goodness, if you do something to upset somebody she cares about, not to her, but if you do something to upset somebody that she cares about, that whole COVID comes out. I've seen it. And I've, I've seen it because people have been nice to me. And then I'm holding this little pit bull back. <laughs> I know that one day, someone would win the heart of you if you would just take some time, stop watching The Real Housewives, <laughs> and put forth a little bit of effort. I mean, for those of you that don't know her, she is like a super pain in the ass to get out of the house, to do anything, or to even talk to somebody. <laughs> it's a good speech, right? <laughs> so, <laughs> being the great sister that I am, I found somebody, moved him in, and moved you out of the house, so you could do what you gotta do, right? Mr. and Mrs. Landisberg, thank you for raising such a caring and special man. You guys did a great job. And we appreciate that. And Jamie, I'm sure you had something to do with it too, so thank you as well. I know I have a brother. I didn't really want one, but I have one now. <laughs> Eric, and I didn't think I was going to feel comfortable about giving my sister away to somebody because. I figure I'd have to practice my happy face, like, <laughs> Eric, hey, okay. y'all, for those of you that know me, you know I really can't fake that, um, but I wouldn't want to get you upset, <clears throat> you know, but I mean, I actually found somebody that I, well, I didn't find them, I think you did, but I mean, there actually is somebody, <laughs> but there is actually somebody out there that I am happy that you are with, and I trust will treat you right, mm-hmm. <laughs> because I see how great you are with your own family. I see how great you are with my kids, who sometimes I feel like you better than they do me and their father. <laughs> but I see how great you treat Erica, and that is super important and all that matters. The fact that you never pass up an opportunity to go visit and spend time with Grandma means so much to all of us, and it shows so much about your character. <clears throat> 
But my favorite thing about <laughs> my sister marrying you is that you took a hermit crab of a girl and you pushed her out to spend time with us. You see, we have a family text, right? With my mom, my dad, my sister, and my husband, and these two. And we'll be like, hey guys, who wants to go for dinner tonight? And Erica's like, oh no, we're just gonna relax at home. And at the same exact time, Eric's like, okay, what time? <laughs> and guess what? Eric wins. <laughs> and it's great because I think we've seen more of my sister since she's been with Eric. And you know, then when she just looked around the corner, we're actually living with me. <laughs> but anyway, thank you so much for making family important and making, you know, it a priority. And I know we might be a little loud and crazy sometimes. We are mostly Italian. It's gonna happen. Um, but let me just take care of my little sister, okay? No problem. Thank you. so thankful for you coming into his life. I don't think I've ever seen him so happy, except for the day he moved in with me. <laughs> Those of you who know Eric, he's quite a guy. Low key, goes with the flow, as uh, Nicole said, always up for anything, especially a cheeseburger and french fries and an ice cream sundae. Eric is such a wonderful person, the guy you can call on, uh, and, on any hour of the night for a favor or just to talk. I could stand here and tell you stories for hours about Eric and I through the years, but I'll keep them between us. All right, one story. It's one of my favorites. Uh, Eric came down to visit me at Towson. I brought him to my fraternity party, and he found Jungle Juice. He liked it. He really liked it. So much so that he ended the evening romantically hugging the toilet. I asked him, dude, are you okay? His response was, I'd be fine if this room would just stop spinning. <laughs> Throughout the years, wherever, uh, wherever there was Mike, there was Eric, and wherever there was Eric, there was Mike. On the soccer and baseball fields as kids, basketball courts, Simon, as we got older and then college. He went up north to Johnson and Wales, and I went south to Towson. We remained close and stayed in touch throughout. Then while I was living in Maryland, Eric called me up one day and said he needed a change. I told him to come down to Maryland and live with us. And he did. I was so happy to be close with, to him again. Spending time with Lauren and I, Adam and Michelle, Steve and Neil, we loved having him around. Then the day came when Lauren and I decided to move forward in our relationship, and Eric moved out and in with Steve. <laughs> From birthday parties to baseball games to life events, Adam's wedding and my wedding, Eric was always there. Lauren and I missed having him around daily, but we saw him frequently. When Jamie had Cameron and AJ, I think he felt his time in Maryland was over and wanted to go home. Closer to be with his nephews, so he left Maryland and went back to New Jersey. A year or so after AJ was born, Lauren and I had his first non-blood niece, Haley, and the name Uncle Rocky, was born. We would see Uncle Rocky frequently as he came to meet us wherever we were in New Jersey while we were there, or even came to Maryland to see the whole Zarin family. He was one of us, or he is one of us. I always had Uncle Rocky, Adam always had Uncle Stevie, and together we were one big dysfunctional family. <laughs> then comes Melon. She adores her Uncle Rocky too. Those of you who know Eric, as Michael said, 
Though he's so great with all the kids, all they want to do is climb around and be around their fun-loving fun -loving Uncle Rocky. As Eric and I would catch up on the phone, I would ask him, any chicks? And he would say, eh, none of them I really like. Until the day I asked him, any chicks? In a typical Eric voice, he said, yeah, I guess. I found this girl I like. <laughs> With Eric, you need to pull it out of him. Sheila and Jeff know this well. I said, on, uh, uh, I said, I said, what, she, what does she like, he told me. I said, what's her name, he told me. I said, I wouldn't forget that one on our next call. A few months go by, and Lauren and the girls and I finally met Erica. We loved her within five minutes of meeting her. Beautiful and sweet, engaging and personable, attentive to our kids, she was perfect. We loved her. A few months go by, Eric and Erica came down to Maryland to spend the weekend with us. We had such a great time getting to, get to know Erica, and we saw how happy they were together. Eric was beaming. This assured our original impression of her, and after he asked our opinion, we told him, she's great, she's a keeper, we love her, don't this up. <laughs> Eric, thankfully, you didn't. You found love. Guys, you're here today, surrounded by all the people that love you and want all the best for you. Eric, thank you for making me your best man. It's quite an honor I've waited for over 30 years to serve. Thank you for including my girls as your flower girls on the most special day, special day of your lives. They love their Uncle Rocky and Aunt Rocka. <laughs> Lauren, the girls and I wish you, Lauren, the girls, oops, Lauren, the girls and I wish you both a life together filled with much love, health, happiness, and endless chicken parm. You both bring so much love and life to us, and today we celebrate you. I love you both very much, and I'm so happy you found each other. Awesome tough, congratulations, we all love you.